sorry for the delays. I was going to get out on the weekends like usual. Um, I'm going to be slowing down and taking a break for a little bit. I'm still going to, my goal is still to have one week, one video done a week. Just updates on progress and whatnot. Um, it's, progress is being made and it's being made relatively quickly. But God, do I have stuff going on and it's very tiring because I just don't have that much time anymore. Um, as you should be seeing, uh, those are uh, missile versions 1 and 2, ones that are actually starting to get small enough and resource effective enough to actually do stuff. Currently, it's more like guided precision munitions. Um, which is definitely a use which I will explore later, but not in this version. Because these are obviously undone, I think I won't be uploading them, unless somebody specifically requests them. I'm currently working on developing a Missile Type 3. Uh, these ones, they had some funky issues. Basically, I made the sensor the setup on the bottom, which detects the little bump on the radar disc dish area. Um, so sensitive that the flow point error at the edge of the map actually starts affecting it. I still haven't been able to turn the missile after spawning it in because when I connect disc connectors to a main frame um, and connect it's the disc connectors to both radar discs, they for some reason fuse together and act as if they were a single object, and because they spin along different axes, they stop each other from rotating. There's that. Um, and finally, there's a couple of other minor issues, such as not strong connection, which caused it to jitter again, partially low point precision error, which caused it to like oscillate back and forth. Um, but the reason I'm not uploading these is because they have like a major issue where gyro on its lowest setting, which is 0.1 force, is way too strong for a single gun to rotate, and even two guns, it's, it's too much force, that's the problem. So what I did to reduce the force of the dampening, because too much dampening, it undercorrects and it cannot hit anything, which I have tried, it's not much better than like using nothing. It's still useful, but like only on basically perfectly still targets. And even then it's very bad. Um, so what I did was I put a servo with just like some amount of strength in between the gyro and the actual part that rotates to reduce the force even more since I can set the force of that thing even lower. But the whole thing is that I've been avoiding using servos as dampening. I've specifically only been using stuff that reduces force, not applies force. See, the thing is, gyros, they dampen stuff out to zero. They, they adjust for the speed at which something is rotating and apply an appropriate amount of force. Same thing with air resistance, it scales with the speed of rotation. The problem with using servos and to dampen stuff is they tend to go back and forth a lot um, because there's no dampening. If it swings one way, it'll apply force constantly as it swings it back, which will just make it overcorrect. And then it causes a feedback loop. Um, and it turns out that was actually one of the main reasons the oscillations were happening. Um, in my third missile version, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, so basically what I was, the, if I was going to use the plane analogy again, I was basically with before I had just a, um, yaw, like vertical stabilizer, like on the tail of the plane, quote unquote, it's, it's a good analogy. Um, but see now, um, I'm going to try like a quote unquote V-tail design where I'm going to have two gyros set, in it, set at an angle because you could choose how much of the V-tail is stopping vertical motion or how much of it is stopping horizontal motion by choosing the angle. And 
by choosing the angle, I can choose how much of that stops um, the angle of motion that I'm trying to restrict. So that's going to be my attempt. Um, my first idea was to just build a bigger radar and just have it big enough to work with a 0.1 gyro. Um, but yeah, it's, it's shrinking, it's getting more effective. The current biggest restriction is the range of the guns, auto aim detection thing, which it's good. It's very good. It's better than most things currently, but it's not perfect. Something that I can actually increase and can affect is the FOB of the guns. I did some testing. Um, the small gun has... So there apparently are two values. A value to which it turns to shoot and a value to which it visually starts attempting to turn. It can't turn past... I don't know at what point it can't turn past. But I do know that it starts turning when something is within 45 degrees. Rocket launchers EMPs have somewhere around like 37 by my estimates when they visually start turning. Um, but uh, rocket launchers and EMPs, they can only shoot um, within 20 degrees. Um, so yeah, there's apparently that where there's two different values. One for when it starts turning, the other is when it's actually within the line of fire. So yeah, um, assuming using the, the rate at which it starts turning, a single gun, single basic smart cannon, it has n like 45 to each direction, so 90 degree cone. So currently 90 degree FOV, using multiple stacked side by side, you can increase the FOV. The problem is, if somebody's trying to copy this, don't, just don't. If you go back to my first videos when I was explaining the funky way that the guns have to be positioned, it's a pain. Once you start stacking multiple at different angles splayed out, they don't always add up together very linearly. Sometimes there's way too much force in the center and it spins itself out. And oftentimes it locks in like 30 degrees offset from the center line. Sometimes it locks um, the target to the side instead of perfectly along the middle, depending on how you tune it. It's, it's, it's possible. It's just going to be annoying. Also, it's very size expensive, complexity expensive, power core expensive. Overall, a bad idea, I think. I mean, it'll definitely have its uses, but yeah. Um, another minor thing that if somebody wants to Again, try to recreate this because I won't be uploading this too many errors right now. Um, so, missile version 2, I added a shield generator, more thrusters, more everything. Um, see, because the problem is when bullets hit something, they apply a force to it. If you shoot a vehicle with a lot of, with like the minigun, let's say, it'll move the vehicle back a little bit, the one that's getting hit. Um, this means, so, as an example, the radar, which I was using, I was hitting the towers on NASU. I know, I know, joke, 9-11 uh, joke goes here. Um, so a laser blaster hit the radar disc. God, I need to make a video on how to make proper radars. Anyway, and it spun out of control. So, like, I don't know if that was just lucky timing or what, but I need to put shields on them. Or I could armor them up, but the sheer amount of bulk that would add, and the fact that I would still need to add the rusters for to move it, I think that the power core cost and the weight cost of the shield generator is actually a better deal overall for the missile. And that's about it. Sorry for the delay uh, on the video. Again, um, next week's video should be like... Missile Type 3, hopefully. Um, I am doing other stuff, so maybe not. Well, that's that. Um, if you need anything, contact me, I guess, through the comments, because I still haven't figured that out. Goodbye.